Act One of The Noble Heart by George Henry Lewis. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Noble Heart, a tragedy in three acts as performed at the Royal Olympic Theatre by G. H. Lewis Dramatis Personae Don Gomez de la Vega Read by Wayne Cook Don Leon, his son Read by Andrew Latherham Don Antonio Read by Caveat Don Garcia Read by Henry Rosales Don Guzman Read by Greg Giordano Herman, read by Todd. Signor Reynaldos, read by Alan Mapstone. Lazardo, read by Larry Wilson. First Alguazil, read by David Purdy. Juana, read by Jen Broda. Stage directions, read by Kelly Taylor. The Noble Heart, Act One. Scene one, a baronial hall. At a table are seated Don Antonio Camporial and Don Garcia, drinking. <laughs> Most true. And then that Moorish girl whose eyes languor seemed that slumbering fire, a passion unawakened. How she tricked us! Tricked us? Tricked you? I never trusted her. I kissed her on the mouth and she kissed me. And when she threw out Moorish wiles for me, I said to her, My pretty one, I dote upon thy sex, and love thee as a beaker of old wine, but this distinction have I always drawn twixt lovely woman and her rival, wine. Listen, if wine a moment master us, the morning air brings freshness back again. But woman forces us to keep cool heads. If once she masters us, there is no morrow. To bring sobriety, now I am a sober man. With that she pouted, smiled, then laughed outright and kissed me on the mouth again and clapped her little hands together and then fled. I never saw her more. Well, here's two women. <laughs> Raising the goblet. May she deceive us so that she will love us. Give me the love today and I will bear the pain of her deceit tomorrow. That's philosophy. It is, for I am certain of the joy her lips will give today. And her deceit, I'm not sure it will spoil a moment's rest. But where's Leon? <laughs> Stolen away? Yes, he has left the cup and our delectable society to gaze upon the melancholy moon. Look at him. How enwrapped. Calling. Leon. Leon. Enter Leon. Is this companionship? Pardon me. My thoughts were wandering. And so you thought to read them in the moon? Prithee, illumine the obscurity of my prosaic soul and give a reason. How can you leave the generous delights of wine and eyes that sparkle with glad thoughts and friendly carelessness of talk to gaze upon that sad monotony, the moon? Antonio, she gazes on it. Ah. She gazes, and I seem to read her thoughts. And when the weary wandering clouds pass by, with lingering lovingness as loath to pass, I fancy them the... Truce to your fancies. That girl has made a dreamer of you, Leon. Since first you scaled the casement and returned more like a drunken madman than yourself, and raved about the witcheries of the maid, your thoughts have been naught but poetry. They have, for women are the poetry of life. In other words, a pretty jingling lie, soothing an hour's leisure and no more. You slander woman? Then you have not loved. Yet had you seen Juana, even you would cease these idle jests about the sex, and blush that you ever had spoken of her. Such gentleness, such trustingness, such truth, such grace, such winning fondness, and such eyes. Eyes into which my soul has giddy gazed, and spoken to her soul through mists of beauty. Bah! She's woman! She'll make a fool of you. They all do. Tis their nature. I, for one, have always been a fool with them. Laugh on. Had you but seen her, you would never doubt her. Doubt what? Her beauty? Very likely not. The poem always jingles well, yet beauty will not transmute the fiction into truth. It is her honesty we... Leon, laying his hand on his sword. This passes jesting, 
Antonio, a breath upon her name is insult, which all the license of our friendship... Antonio, laughing. <laughs> now would he quarrel with us, with us, his oldest, dearest friends? For what? See how his angry hand chafes the sword hilt. Soon will its pointing terror at our breasts proclaim the truth of woman. Antonio, I love that woman. Such things have been ere now. Men have loved many women. I myself once caught that malady of restless youth, a sort of moral measles. I fed on sighs, but never with a fever at its height. Was I so blind that I could perceive women were constant in inconsistency? Antonio, and you, Garcia, you are both my friends. I do not threaten now. I only ask you, is it because you are my friends that you insult my wife? Your wife? wife? Such will she be. Why? Are you mad? A merchant's daughter. The ancient blood of Vega mixed with... No contempt. Juana will be mine. By St. Peter's, this is serious. And your father? Ah, friends, there is the pang. There is my dread. The centuries of splendor and of pride of all our race seem swelling in his breast. But then, his deep, deep love for me... Will be the pretext of his opposition. Parents never thwart the wishes of their sons. That out of love never crush cherished plans, but for their children's good, tis always so. The truth is, all relations dearly love a little virtuous meddling, and prescribe, physician-like with earnest gravity, the dose which they would shudder at themselves. Count not upon your father's love for you. A merchant's daughter, methinks I see his look. With what a calm contempt would he smile down the hint of such alliance. This marriage... Forgive my bluntness, but are you convinced she is not something dazzled by your rank? That base suspicion wrongs yourself, not her. She knows me not as Leon de la Vega. Indeed. In truth, I have concealed my birth. Some wayward fancy, perhaps half-suspicion such as now fills your mind, made me conceal it. She knows me but as an adventurer, whose fortune must be conquered by her sword. The plan was wise. Keep your birth secret still. You know she loves you only for yourself. If she continue constant to yourself, if you return and find her willing still to brave the world with an adventurer, in heaven's name marry her. She will be priceless. I scorn to doubt her constancy and truth. Scorn is cheap answer, but it proves so little. Besides, you have once doubted her. Doubt on. Or if you scorn to doubt, scorn not the trial. Grant friendship and your welfare this one test. He fears it. I do not fear it, sir. Then accept it. To justify my love, and to make you blush at your suspicions, sirs, I do accept it. Here, I pledge my word, to keep my secret till we all return. To let her deem me an adventurer, to let her deem me poor and friendless still. Hush, here comes Don Gomez. Enter Gomez. Your voices sounded high, as in dispute. Antonio. To Gomez. We were disputing on the eternal themes of poetry and women. Leon pretends, or rather he pretends that he pretends, that poetry surpasses war and wine, and women are the poetry of life. I say war is the fiery wine of life, warmed by its spirit first we learn to feel, that we are truly men. Wine is the war of peace, which in default of battle drugs the brain, with resolution and immortal bliss. These glorious brothers act the glorious things, which poetry but Fains. You hear him, father? Gomez, to Leon. Heed not the laughing libeler, my Leon. Cherish thy love of poetry. Twill be a solace and a light upon thy path. Wine is a solace. Poetry is all will be. No, laughter, no. It lives forever with us. All that is great and glorious in life is based on it. Mark how its spirit hovers over the world, beneficent as love. How o'er its page the impassioned youth will bend, while gentle maiden, reading through their tears, turn soften to the lovers at their side. It makes the youthful soul thrill with great thoughts. Manhood preserves its noblest youthful dreams, and age remember that it was once young. All that is true of wine. The sparkling cup sends a swift, rushing vigour through our veins. Books weaken manhood, and had I my will, I'd banish every rhymer from the earth. Then you would banish beauty from the earth. What brutes were we, the meanest, dullest brutes? Blind instincts o'er our souls, imperial, were not that poetry. 
sent quickening truths of the heavenly light through our humanity, and with its voice piercing the rudest souls, woke up the angel that lies sleeping there. Why, you are worse than Leon. Wiser, say. Trumpet sounds without. That is the music to which my blood dances. And mine. Enter Lissardo. My lord, Don Guzman de Tivera craves audience. Admit him. Exit Lizardo. From the king, Don Guzman comes. Doubtless flatteries, beseechings, and perchance with threats. And you? Will you again refuse? Were he to come in his own royal person to implore me, I would not stir. Enter Don Guzman de Tivara, accompanied by six knights. Greeting to the most high and noble de la Vega. My lord, you are welcome in yourself, less so in your assumption of ambassador. I fear you bring a bootless message here. Let me not think so. The Moors, Don Gomez, sweep down like whirlwinds on our startled towns. Once more relying on your love, the king sends for your aid. As I said before, my aid I give to Spain, and gladly give it. Five hundred lances, headed by my son, set forth to-morrow. And you? Keep to my oath. I remain here. This will not satisfy our gracious sire. Gomez, proudly. It satisfies Don Gomez de la Vega. Your son is but a boy. But you forget that though a boy, that boy is still a Vega. A knight as valiant as all Spain can boast. They say a Moorish captain, when he died, commanded that his skin should make them drums, convinced the very sound would scare the foe. So when the Moors but hear the name of Vega, twill blanch their faces to a Christian hue. Don Gomez, tis for you the army calls. Valor is common as the air. For skill and ripe experience we look to you. I know it. They know it too, the fawning slaves, the silken courtiers, well then caused the king to look with coldness on me. They knew it well. He turned from me to them. A worthy change. My path was straight. Theirs was tortuous. My voice was rough from shouting unto war. Theirs was soft from whispering flatteries. I was a warrior. Sleek courtiers they. He turned from me to them. Now let them help him. Twas I hath cured his throne when tottering. But now, were Muslims darkening his palace, I would not stir. Is that your final answer? Haughtily. Don Guzman, I have spoken. Then I here proclaim you traitor. Ha! Huh. Half drawing his sword, advances a step towards Don Guzman, who draws. His knights do the same. Leon, Antonio, and Garcia also draw. Gomez, recovering his self-possession. Peace, tis the king speaks. Proceed. In the king's name I here proclaim you traitor. Your lands are confiscated. Gomez, sarcastically. Traitor. <laughs> yes, this many scarred bosom is a traitor's. Proclaim it. None in spade will give the ear. Traitor. Don't Gomez, traitor. Pointing to the portraits. Look around. Here are my ancestors, men of an elder time, a greater race, who left their names as monuments. The light rayed from the glory is my guardian. Pointing, as he speaks, to the several portraits. There is Don Sancho, who at Rosenvalles red in the valley with the Frenchman's blood. Don Manuel, who stormed upon the Moors at Cordova, and slew Aben Zulima, Don Philip, named Jitjast, who forced King John to keep his kingly word unbroken, Don Guzman the Magnificent, who led the Cortes by his counsels, here his son, my father, who sustained the weight of glory left as a legacy to all our race, and to its splendor added all his own, and here am I, Don Gomez de la Vega, the representative of this great race. Ask Spain if traitor is the name I bear. 
Where then is thy allegiance to the king? Here in my own domains I am king. The Vegas ever were. No vassalage binds us to the throne. As for your king, I chose him for my suzerain. Was free to lend him aid as one prince to another. I do so now. But for myself, no more in battle or in council am I his. I love that man. I gave up all to him. Did I not win his battles with my blood? Did I not shape his counsels, save his throne? And when security was gained, uprose some subtle-worded men, whose grey-beard talk was all of policy, when I named honour, as if a nation's honour were less pure than that of private men, as if the acts which in a man we brand with infamy were glorious in a nation. These wise men, did they not tell the king he was a tool for my ambition? Did they not gain his ear? Then war broke out. The peace which I had gained, was it not shattered by their policy? And the command on whom was it bestowed? On whom? On me who claimed as might do? No, a courtier. Let him keep it now. Let policy win victories. Gomez, this is no answer fit for me to hear. It is the only answer Gomez makes. Then, thou bold rebel, I defy thee here. Throws down his gauntlet. There is my glove. And there is mine. Don Guzman, thou hast yet to learn a lesson, but seldom taught in courts. I will teach it thee. Leon, pick up your glove. Leon obeys reluctantly. Gomez, taking up Guzman's glove, approaches him with haughty calmness, and says, Spain holds thee as a well-accomplished knight, yet thou couldst scarcely wield the battle-axe of Gomez de la Vega, and thou bravest him. Take back thy glove. Thy country needs thy arm, when thou hast served her well and gloriously. Then, if still weary of thy life, this gage shall not remain unanswered. Leon, aside to Antonio. He's awed to nothingness. It grieves me to the soul, my lord, to bear this message to the king. Exeunt, Guzman and the knights. And does your purpose hold to send us forth? What should have shaken it? Your answer to the king. Have you not need of every sword? Not I. He will be so well pleased to have my knights that he will only fume at my refusal. If he does more, tut, he dares not. When set we forth? As the morning breaks. Now wilt thou taste the joy of life. I long to kiss the Bologna's swart, blood-mantling face, and in the rushing whirlwind of a charge, plunge on their ranks amidst a storm of blows. I call that poetry. Pray warn your son to keep his eyes away from Moorish beauties or he will bring you home a dusky daughter and tell you she is poetry. Not he. Leon is a vera, and he knows it. Knows it too well to let his amorous glance rest for an hour on the softest cheek which is not tinted with a sprinsly blood. His heart is high, and high will be his choice. Antonio, aside to Leon. That's encouraging. Can he suspect? No. He cannot even suspect you of such madness as to forget your lineage. Oh, pride, pride. Exeunt, Leon and Antonio. Garcia, let me speak with you tonight, ere you lie down. I have much to say to you. I will, my lord. Exit. Gomez, solos. Why, when I warned my Leon not to stoop, even in love, stole there across my soul the shadow of some awful destiny. Can she, whose image blends with all my dreams, can she be one unworthy of my love? I'll not believe it. Yet who can she be? Why am I haunted by her loveliness? Am I a boy? This passion-stirring face, is it a dream? Enter Lizardo. Well, what news, Lizardo? My lord, I find she is the daughter of the old merchant Reynaldos. Reynaldos? It cannot, it cannot be. Are you sure? She is the daughter of Reynaldos? I heard him call her so. Leave me. Exit, Lizardo. His daughter, Reynaldos, merged. Why, what strange trick of fate is this? 
can make an empress of a base-born girl? I think of her no more. I knew there was a terror in her beauty. Though it ran through me like a beam of the sun, I was right. Tut, I am whole heart yet. A merchant's daughter, not even gentle blood to grace her veins. My dream is ended. I'll think of her no more. Rises, turns to the portraits. O oh, ye great glories of our race, look down and bid me not forget of whom I sprang. Ye whom have lived and loved as princes should, who never let your passions weaken pride, but kept unswerving in your noble course. Eagles who never mated but with those who could confront the sun, lend me your strength. Frown this too beauteous image from my heart. I'll go, and from the story of their lives learn a resolution worthy of my name. Exit. Scene 2. A Grove by Moonlight. Enter Leon and Juana, arm encircled, gazing tenderly at each other. Again and yet again, my own Juana, I swear I love thee. Swear it again. Can oaths give more reality to love? No, but affection craves to hear itself murmured in words. You love me? Yet again, why do you love me? Love is divine, and acts in a divine, unapprehended manner. Unseen, unknown, unconsciously it comes. We know not whence nor whither. We only know that vaguely and imperiously it draws two trembling souls together, trembling in its painful rapture, joy abashed by fear. And wilt thou love Juana ever? For ever. When she is old and ugly. <laughs> that will never be. Juana shakes her head. Believe me, never. Juana, plucking a flower and stripping the leaves off as she speaks. Yes, time will claim his own, and year by year some charm will droop, will fall, thus, leaf by leaf, almost before the dew has dried upon them, till naught remains but the unsightly stem to sigh o'er with regret and cast aside. Holds up stem, then throws it away. By thy own matchless beauty? No, Juana. To eyes that love, the loved is ever young. Oh, what a thrill of rapture runs me through as that sweet thought rises within my soul. Leon, I was alone in this dear world until I knew thee. How did I live until I knew thee? Nay, I did not live, for love is life. Without it, life were death. Yes, love is life. It is the glimpse on earth of that immortal life our longing souls will revel in in heaven. Thou, my sweet, must draw thy strength and comfort from this thought when I am away. I had forgotten that, and thou must leave me for those wicked wars. Call them not wicked wars, my own beloved, for I must shape my fortunes with my sword. Then, blessed wars, I'll bless them for thy sake. I'll prove myself fit for a soldier's wife, and the glory in the wars which gave thee scope to show the greatness of thy soul. Well, I know men are for action made, and glorious deeds fill up the measure of their hopes. And love, which is the story of a woman's life, forms but an episode in man's. Be great, it is thy destiny. I can only love. Ambition is the prophet of the heart. Follow its promptings, Leon, and be great. Go boldly forth into the stirring world. Fight, struggle, conquer, win thyself a name. My love shall tend thee, sitting at thy feet, sharing thy glory, proud with all thy pride. My love shall be a garland for thy brow, and not a peevish hindrance on thy path. Your words are strength and courage. I need both. Although my fortune hangs upon these wars, the thought of parting. But you will be firm, you will be brave, will you not, dearest one? A swimmer panting on a roaring sea, and washed by wild waves from the shore away, knowing if courage fail him, he must perish, feels not the desperate struggle with his fate, as I parting. But the shore is there, and there love beckons smilingly to hope. 
I will be firm. I know thou wilt return to me. Yet, oh, the desolation of the world when thou art gone. Thou art the world to me. Thou art mother, father, friends. Thou art my life. Hast thou but a mother or a sister upon whose bosom I might lay my head and hear her talk over thy infant days? Hast but a father, were he stern and cold, I would so win him with caressing ways, that he should put his sternness all aside and talk to me of Leon. Hadst but a dog to prick up ears with loving eagerness, if I but murmured Leon, I would sustain with better hope the thought of parting now. But no, a friendless orphan is my Leon, and I have not one solace for my grief. Leon, aside. My oath, my oath. Fool, fool that I have been. What cruelty is in my silence. Fool. I am wrong to torture you. You will return. I know we must part. No, you will return. There, I smile. See? I can smile and hope. See, I will not be cast down. Will you not smile? These foolish tears, they blind me, and I cannot read what is in your face. Nothing but love, and dying tenderness for thee, Juana. Tis but a few short weeks and you return, then we shall be happy. You shall play the braggart soldier, I, the audience, and battle shall be storied in your speech, while for the exploits they shall outdo the Cid. Leon smiles. There, I have made you smile. You teach me courage. Teach but yourself as well. Kissing her on the forehead. I shall return to kiss away your tears. Let me gaze steadfastly into your eyes. There, to read hope and patience and endurance. Now, as I gaze, I feel myself grow stronger. Now, while I can, I'll tear myself away. My own, my heart's adored. Sinks into his arms. Leon, tearing himself from her. Angels ever guard you. He rushes out. Juana gazes after him for a moment, then exclaims, Now I'm alone. Alone. Desolate. Alone. Sinks on her knees. Gazing after Leon. End of Act Two. Act Two of The Noble Heart by George Henry Lewis. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two. Three months have elapsed. Scene One. A library. Gomez discovered sealing a letter and stamping it with the hilt of his dagger. As the curtain rises, he strikes upon a bell. Enter Lissardo. For Signor Rinaldos. Gives letter. My lord, there waits a friar at our gate who craves to speak with you. Let him come in. Exit Lizardo. Tis done. The letter's gone. There is a weight of doubt flung off from me. Why should I parter with my conscience thus? Why struggle to be false unto myself? The voice of my whole being cries aloud that I am right. Thus to give way to love. I start at shadows. Enter Herman. Peace be with his house. That voice. Herman, tis thee? Thee in this monkish garb? Thee whom of old, admiring Spain, proclaimed the flanties of all her bravest knights? Tis I. Throwing back his cowl. Tis thine ancient brother in arms. My joy at seeing thee, although so great, can scarcely master yet astonishment. We, who have lived and loved, fought and rejoiced, as if our two souls were but halves of one, we have been some years separate. Strangeness has grown between us, greater than those years. Listen, Gomez, you know how I was wronged, how, 
Trusting princely promises, I fell into the fatal snare. My eyes were opened. I saw, as in a flash, the nothingness, the folly, and the falsehood of this world. I fled from man, and sought the sterner truths which conscience whispers in our solitude. There my immortal nature was revealed. There I resolved to live the higher life of contemplation and of ecstasy. Nature was open, as a book, before me, wherein I read sweet lessons of divinity. Mingling my shadow with the shade of trees, I mused upon eternity. I was an altered man. But ever and anon arose thine image, as of the friend who once had shared his soul with me. And now, to make thee sharer in the glory of my new awakened life, have I returned. And thou art come to me, hoping to win me from the world, and make the sterile thoughts of musing egotism the occupation of a worthless life? I come to make thee conscious of thy destiny. Is not eternity our final home? Then why delay to seek it? I will tell thee. As every river wanders to the sea, so heavenward tend our various paths of life. But every river runs an appointed course, passing through earth before it reaches the sea. Good Herman, man was made to live with man, his friend and helper, bearing and forbearing, giving and taking kindness, loving all, sharing his joys and lessening his sorrows, and from the errant course of ignorance, drawing him upwards to the light. In vain, in vain thou strivest to hide thy state from me. I have heard of the indignities the king, the thankless king, has shown thee. I have heard how you have braved him, how you brave him still. The king, pa, we have no king. On the throne there sits a weakling. When he slighted me, I felt the depth of his ingratitude but was not then to learn how kings could change. And as he sent to me for aid, I felt such pride in my refusal. It repaid his slight. I humbled him, who strove to humble me. But when the refusal had extorted threats, when he proclaimed me a rebel, when he swore to crush Don Gomez with his royal wrath, he had never stirred to execute his threat because he saw the Daro, Calatrava, Silvas, and Lara threatened at my side. Then, when he paused, the man whom as a foe I could respect as worthy of his crown, I scorned, as I must scorn the puny thing that dares to threaten, yet dares not act. I come in time to wean thee from the world, to make thee quit its mockeries of joys, its eating cares, and earthward groveling thoughts. In thy dejection thou wilt better heed what I can say to thee. Men only see the stars when night overshadoweth the earth, and only when dark sorrow dims the glare of earthly vanities and gaudy hopes, smiles the mild splendor of all heavenly truths. Deceived, betrayed, cast down, we look within, and in the mirror of our souls behold, reflected, the Eternal. Gomez, I claim thee, from my lonely cell have I returned, among the haunts of men, by spiritual mastery to win thy soul. O oh, friend, from Satan and the world, for ever whispering in thine ear this truth, the heart hath but one resting place, in God. Herman, we are made to live, and not to contemplate. O oh, let me rather win thee back again, return not to the desert, stay with me. I mingle once more with this sinful world. Say that the world is false as thou dost paint it. Is it not weakness to avoid it thus? Stay, make it better with thy truthfulness. Names such as thine and mine have halos around them. And shall we veil their splendor from men's eyes? What is the glory of a spotless life? The worth of the greatness keep they not alive, Upon the sacred altar of the country, the flame of honor, which the careless hands of vulgar men would suffer to expire? But if men turn to wolves, forget their faith, trample their consciences under golden heels, juggle with faith and virtue, shall I then live with them, and become as one of them? Good Herman, 
The world is as an underripe growing fruit, with many scars and flecks upon its rind, but the core is sound. The spirit of good may be obscured, they cannot be extinguished, and if some vices would distort our nature, still there's a something in the heart of man keeps virtue and all goodness from decay. Cease, cease those sophistries. Oh, come away, and in the stillness of the world's repose, learn to detect what is divine in life. The wounds are fresh, they bleed yet. Come away. Do not all stricken deer wander forlorn to hide their wounds in leafy solitudes? E'en so the heart that has been struck by a man, bowed in its grief, wanders companionless, calls upon heaven, and finds solace there. Ah, oh, my brother, there is a strength in sorrow none can know, save those whom it has lifted up to God. In vain, in vain you talk to me. There is such rapture in all loneliness, a calm of deep content when the soul flings itself on silence. There, in patient thought to contemplate, interrogate, adore, to know that we have suffered, that no more can sorrow touch us, or the world disturb us. Why do the stars forever speak to us throughout the solemn night? Why does the sea keep sounding on its multitudinous moan, its many-voiced resonance of woe? Are not these warnings from the infinite calling us unto him? You talk of death to one overjoyed with life. You talk of quiet and repose to one whose soul is turbulent with love. You love? I tremble, yet rejoice at it. I fear yet passion swallows up all consequence. I would it were not so. Yet being so, I cannot, will not, strive to alter it. Had the king sent to me but one day later, how gladly should I then have joined the army, and sought oblivion in tumultuous camps. But they had hurled my bold defiance forth, ere I had learned who was the maid I loved. For three months pride had struggled against love, but here, in my inaction, love has vanquished. And who is she hath wrought this madness on thee? You know her not. She is a merchant's daughter. To that has love brought Gomez de la Vega. And yet Juana's worthy of a crown. Juana, daughter to Rinaldos? The voice within which bade me come to thee spoke like a prophet. Fly, Gomez, fly. What means this sudden transport? Knowest thou art affecting her? Do I not know she's woman? Fickle, vain, ambitious? Think of her age, her state. Then ask thyself if marketing her charms. Silence. Once more I bid thee fly, ere yet it is too late. Reflect, the heart hath but one resting place, in God. Exit. Why do I shudder beneath his words? He leaves behind him darkness. Shall I heed his ravings? He spoke wild words, yet he knew nothing, nothing. Her age, ay, there is the point, her age. That might indeed give pause. I cannot pause. Oh, why have years left traces in my hair and not upon my heart? There, there is the sting. Exit. Scene 2 a room in Reynaldo's house. Reynaldo's seated at a table gloomily, Juana standing by him. My dearest father, never till this day have I beheld your brow so dashed with gloom. Never till this day, my child, did ruin stare me so boldly in the face. All's lost. For some time you have marked how anxious care fretted my speech. Yet there was always hope. I had so many ventures forth. But now the worst disgrace that can befall a merchant totters above me. We are ruined. Ruined? Oh, worse than ruined. For we are dishonoured. If ruin only meant our poverty, I could confront it meekly. It means worse. I dragged down with me all who trusted me. 
think of the desolation i must bring on widows orphans and on struggling men who place their little fortunes in my hands a merchant's honour must be immaculate so many trust in it that makes our pride a rightful pride but the least breath on it is fraught with ruin to himself and others that fate awaits me lunos will to-day destroy the edifice of our good name is there no one to stretch a friendly hand will not why there is don gomez de la vega he has of late befriended you and sought in every way to draw you closer to him alas my child thou but recalls to me the fearful thought which i have flung aside the thought that it was nothing but thy beauty which drew this noble to our humble hearth gomez befriends me comes here constantly but i have lately noticed that his eyes are ever wandering to thy seat and when thou art absent still his thoughts pursue thee thou shudderest what must i feel who trusting in the nobility of his large soul asked and obtained a loan of monies from him with which i stayed my ruin for a moment yes gomez saved me but a month ago since then the thought has tortured me that all this kindness was but meant to purchase thee heavens enter a servant who gives Ronaldos a letter what's this is this a mockery his hand oh shame upon my thoughts child we are saved here here don gomez de la vega asks thy hand in honourable matrimony thy features stiffen wonderment has swept all life from out thy cheek horror what's this does not thy bosom leap at the glad news or does thy happiness bewilder thee unsay those words oh spare me spare me this juana oh crowd not anguish on this brain too great for it to bear ask any sacrifice but that sacrifice is this unheard of honour this princely state now offered thee father that princely state can never be thy child's what is this madness darest thou refuse i'm not my own to give away juana hast thou a lover i have rich noble alas then thou lovest him not i love him not i will not have thee love the man who stands betwixt this prize and me therefore i say as thou hast been undutiful in loving return now to do thy duty and forget him this wealth and grandeur cannot be mine ha is my dishonour then so slight a thing thou wilt not save me from it oh do not think thy child undutiful unmindful of thy welfare or unwilling to rescue thee by any sacrifice which may involve herself alone oh heaven that ever i should seem to be so selfish that ever i should seem to have the power of saving thee from ruin and not save thee what monstrous folly warps thy judgment child thus set some girlish fancy newly born which will not last three moons against the pomp the greatness and the glory of a life thou a beggar wilt thou refuse a crown because acceptance will so stain my soul i could not wear that crown i'm not my own to make this sacrifice how can i make it can i thus cast his happiness aside and bitter all the trustingness of youth and bring to sick despair the heart which wound its hopes around my truth i cannot do it against that act my soul uprises shuddering the life within me cries out 
That can never be. Listen to me, Juana. It is thy father speaks, and speaks in kindness. I know the recklessness of youth, which stakes a whole existence on a single cast. Thy sex and age explain thy resolution, but I must force thee to be wise. No, no, thou wilt not force me to commit a crime. For crime this act would be. In loving one, to wed another, I wrong both. By all the love that sweetened your lone youth, by my poor mother, once so dear to you, by all that you hold sacred, I implore you, do not force on me this detested marriage. Can you appeal to that sweet saint in heaven who gave up all to follow me, who toiled and smiled amidst her toil because she loved? Is it that very love I dare appeal to? Why was toil light? Because love smiled on it. Why was life sweet? Because love sweetened it. Your hearts were pure, and you could face the world. Poverty for you had nothing terrible. Neglect for you had not a bitterness. Fond hearts, glad consciences made a bright home amidst the fiercest struggles. But if you had not loved... If venal crime had soiled the sanctity of union, then what a life, though past mid gilded pomp, would have been yours. Nay, listen to me. Say that you loved as never woman loved. The rolling years wear out the strongest passion. Love is not life. If life were but an hour, it might be crowded in one burning kiss. But life is long, sad, various, disdains to narrow all its passions into one. Therefore, I force you to your happiness in forcing you to wed with rank and wealth. You argue as if my miserable self were all this act involved. I think of him. And can you think of none but him? Your father must rot in dungeons if you save him not. That is the least. If I am bankrupt maid, think of the misery I spread around. Now widows, orphan children, bless my name, and dream in soft security. Tomorrow they will awake to curse me with their ruin. Juana, think of them, of me and save the dearest part of honourable life, my honour. It is that very honour holds me up and keeps me steadfast in my truthfulness. Father, they trusted you. He trusted me. They placed their fortunes boldly in your hands. He placed his life in mine. Believing me, he staked his heart, his hopes, his happiness. He stated his whole existence on my truth. And can I make him bankrupt? Ah, folly. The passing bitterness of thwarted love cannot be balanced against the misery my bankruptcy will bring. Say not, say not that. Think not that sordid cares of pinching want when they are greatest e'er can be compared with all that withering, immeasurable, and hopeless grief which tears the heart of him who learns the worthlessness of her he loved. I have spoken out of my tenderness and care for you, no less than out of hope to save my honour. I spoke in vain. So be it. Let ruin fall. Ah! Uh, now you hate me. Were Leon here, his noble soul would welcome suffering to rescue others. He would bid me do it. I should be free to act. He would do so. Wait till his return. If he absolve me, I will wed Don Gomez. Think you that Gomez, when he stoops his pride to ask your hand, will tamely wait to hear the answer of another? Juana, passionately. Oh, that I were dead! Enter for Alguazils. Senor Reynaldos, 
You must follow us. Ah, oh, t'was Lunos sent you. He's implacable. That man, that man, how have I trusted him? How aided him in his struggle into wealth? And this is my reward. Father, they've come. To lead me into prison. Wana, a word from you can save me. Where art thou, Leon, in this hour of need? Dare I? Now, senor, if you are ready. Well, sirs, lead on. About to follow them, Wana, with a low scream, arrest him. Is your answer still the same? I wait it. Must this, must this be? Enter servant, who announces Don Gomez de la Vega. One instant, gentlemen. Withdraw a while into this room. All your demands shall be within the hour satisfied. Alguazils, after consulting, exult into side apartment. Don Gomez comes. Call up a smile. Be firm. Juana remains in an attitude of bewildered irresolution. Enter Gomez. Illustrious lord, I know not how to meet. Thy condescension is so great. My child has scarcely yet mastered astonishment at the exalted honour of thy love. Dearest Juana, although some fifty summers sown my brow, and I perchance to thy young eyes may seem one who should long have ceased to dream of love, believe me, never did a stripling's heart throb with a younger passion than now mine. There are a kind of men who ne'er grow old, for in the winter of their years they keep the vernal warmth of sympathy and love, and dare I say, that such a man am I, dare I assume, that converse with great thoughts, heroic acts, and lofty aspirations, have kept alive the sacred fire of youth? Yes, without boasting I can say, that time which made me grey, has not yet made me old. Can then Don Gomez de la Vega stoop to wed a merchant's daughter? Can I stoop to raise a jewel sparkling at my feet and place it next to my heart? Men call you proud. The proudest heart feels most exalted when it most adores. Did not mighty Hercules lay down his strength, spinning with Umfail and all for love? My pride is at thy feet. It is my pride to love thee. When first I gazed upon thee, I owned another greater than myself. I felt it more when I first heard thy voice, and still more when thy witching sunny smiles fell like a glory on me. Wanna, aside. Oh, misery. Seest thou, my lord, she is incredulous. Gomez, aside to him. A well suspicion rises in my mind. Tell me, does she love another? Believe it not. She is as innocent of all affection, except the dreaming reveries of youth, as ever maiden was. Yet how she trembles. She trembles at the honour of thy love, lest she should prove unworthy, lest this match so disproportioned in all worldly sense should one day cause thee to repent. Juana, although I covet thee beyond all else, and offer thee my hand, my heart, my name, my wealth, my rank, my tenderness. Yet, if thou fearest my disproportioned age, speak out the fatal word, and I withdraw. Wanna, slowly, and with downcast eyes. Were it a sin, my lord, in me to wed, not loving as a wife should love her lord? I take that answer, and here say, Farewell. Don Gomez, but an instant past, my child was eager for this honour. Will it be more than an honour at my age? Can she love? She will, she will. Oh, doubt it not, my lord. Esteem will quickly ripen into love 
It is the deep root of all true affection. Juana, think not I would force this match. I know it is a grave thing thus to wed, but since your heart is free, such love as mine must love in turn create. You shall be waited on by wealth and power. Whatever fancy may possess your mind shall grow into reality. The pomp and splendor of a splendid state be thine, and mine the deep delight of loving thee. I have such fulfilled confidence to win by tenderness, return of tenderness. I risk all happiness on that belief. Here is my hand. Refuse it if you fear. Accept it if you hope. Juana remains in a state of agonized hesitation. Ronaldo's watching her eagerly. Then you refuse? Juana still hesitates. Ronaldo's walks to the door of the room in which the alguazils are waiting. When Juana, seeing this, exclaims, Don Gomez, I am thine. Gomez, taking her hand. Mine, mine. This touch runs trembling down each fiber, shaking me even as a tree is shook when summer birds thrill it with music, to call thee my own. Now bright thy joy leaps singing to my breast and spreads a paradise before me. The sense, the pulse, the passion, and the power of that inexplicable mystery which men name love liveth so strong within me. It leaves me upwards as on heavenly wings. Juana, my Juana. Ronaldo's standing between them. Here, take thy bride. Enter Herman. Unsay those words. Unclasp those hands. What's this? Before I shake the dust from off my feet and wander elsewhere in my ministry, I come to claim thee, Gomez, as mine own. Shut not thine ears to me. The solemn words which issue from experience of despair, once more I bid thee ponder gravely on. Gomez, pointing triumphantly to Juana. My heart has found its resting place. Tis here. Juana falls on her knees as in supplication. Herman holds the crucifix over her as the curtain falls. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Noble Heart by George Henry Lewis. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three. Scene One. Interior of a Chapel. The organ is heard playing within. Herman enters from the chapel, meeting Lizardo. How proceeds the marriage? But gloomily. How looks Don Gomez? As one steeped in the entrancement of a dream. And the bride? Motionless. No tears, no tremblings. None of the bridal mystery and fear, the deep, unspeakable and exquisite fear which troubles women, nor the blushing joy which images the life within her love, but as a maid, in whose concentrated grief all thought, all apprehensions are absorbed. Alas, the day! Exit. And what is earthly happiness? A river running ever past the banks whereon the flowers grow, resistless currents washing it onwards, Past its wild desires, Don Gomez triumphs in his girlish bride. She shudders at his tenderness. She has some lover of her age. The consequence, who foresees it not? Sorrow, oh, sorrow! At every winding of life's labyrinth I meet thy sphinx-like face. Men meet thee too, cannot unriddle thee, cannot unveil the mystery of thy presence. Yet they live as if thy presence had no warning in it. Retires. Enter Leon and Antonio. What joy, once more, to touch my own domains. It is a pleasant recompense of peace, and I suppose in spite of court intrigues, the wars must end sometimes. Be grateful for it. Grateful? 
Now will you moralize on peace? Yet you find music in the clang of arms, and the air, misty with the horse's breath, was wondrous pleasant, was it not? Tis past. Whatever joy there may be in the field, I have enjoyed. But now I think of her, whose image stung my soul to glorious deeds. Oh, what delights attend me with Wanna! When through the twilight, talking o'er the wars, I hear her whisper all her hopes and fears, and how she counted weeks, then days, then hours, for my return. Has she a sister, Leon? Why do you ask? Because if love has stood the three months' test of absence by my sword, I think the sister of such constancy worthy of my inimitable self. If? Antonio, you shall blush for this. With all my heart. But let us go forward and gladden them with the news of your arrival. Exit. Herman. Coming down. Peace be with you. My son, you come at a strange time to sit a guest at a strange wedding. Whose may it be? Your father's. My father's? And the bride? Is one he ne'er should have beheld. What mean you? You will say so, because her birth is base, because no ancestry reddens her veins. I, because... My father marry one beneath his rank? He so inexorably proud? Aside. Leon, away with doubts. Juana now is thine. Now bright-eyed joy leaps singing to my breast, singing up heart. Juana now is thine. Antonio rushes in, greatly agitated. Leon, prepare yourself, string up your nerves, rouse all your manhood to confront this blow. Juana, is she ill? Or dead? Or dead? Better she were. Give your fears shape and brave them. Fears? Juana, is she... She is false. Liar. Going to seize him by the throat. Beware. Let me look upon thee. For sure to utter so immense a lie, the boldest heart would need each drop of blood, leaving the face a hideous witness. Blank. Look at me then. Didst thou ever know a falsehood sully these lips? Leon, she is false. Oh. That's not the worst. How? Not the worst? Inconstancy is but the trick of woman. She's worse than false. She's your father's bride. Leon, struck dumb, gazes wildly from Antonio to Herman. What words are those that strike upon mine ear? Were you the lover of Rinaldo's daughter? Oh, triple woe! Oh, vanity of life! Leon, with deep calmness. Now let me wander this world up and down, carrying an old man's heart within my breast. Or take me to some lonely wilderness, where death and melancholy silence reign. Juana, false! And it has ended thus? Oh, God! Oh, God! That I should live for this! The world is dim. I feel I'm growing grey. I'm stricken old, and all is withered here. Juana, false! Then the world is a lie. And such is life? All its fond hopes are dreams, whereon the soul glides through the starless night. We wake to find them dreams. Come then, O oh death, enwrap me in thy mists. Drawing his sword is about to fall on it, when Herman and Antonio interpose. Insensate boy. And for a jade. A painted thing that now, even now, within the churches... Leon, wildly. Within? Within? Said you within? What? Not yet married, then? I'm young again. Life's streams are down my veins. Fires of my heart be still. I'll tear her from the altar she profanes. Leon, Leon! Release me. Rash boy. Leon, struggling with them. Release me! Leon rushes furiously towards the chapel, struggling with Antonio and Herman, when the organ bursts forth in loud and solemn strains. Arrested by the sound, Leon leans upon his sword. Too late. The ceremony is fulfilled. Then what am I? The doors of the chapel are flung open, and the bridal procession issues forth. The organ still plays. Antonio drags Leon off. Gomez appears, leading in Juana. He is triumphant. She, pale and with downcast eyes, scarcely able to stand. 
Herman advances in front of them, raising his hand in warning, says, Hold, Gomez, I implore thee, pause. Good Herman, if thou hast any love for me, abstain. Bring not a bigotry to scare the smile which wreathes itself over this happy day. Hear me, oh, hear me. With a humble heart I come now with assurance of the griefs that cradled lie within thy very joys. Once more I bid thee, quit this harlot world while yet thou canst in peace. If thou remainst till tears have washed the paint from off its cheek, till neath the mask of this fair seeming joy thou shudderest at the hideous skeleton. Madness will bring its terrible oblivion. Stay not, pause not, ask not, come with me. Much must I marvel that thou comest to me here, at the very moment of my triumph, here, when life's goblet running o'er with joy is lifted to my lips. Did I not say that sorrows issue from all earthly joys? Joys are the sunshine, sorrows are the shade. The sunshine passes, but the shade remains. Cold on the spirit, and to tear-wet earth drags down the thoughts which clambered up to heaven. Herman, I lose all patience. Scorn the world, quit it, hate men. Blot out thine eyes, and call nature to witness that there is no sun. Torture thy soul with dismal sophistries, blaspheme and rage, and call it piety. But vex me no more. Ah, thou wilt not heed me? Then, to thy son, hear him. Leon returned? See how his head is bowed? Go, speak to him. Ask him what thoughts thy marriage raises up. The glory of my name, the gladness of my heart. My Leon is returned. Oh! This completes my joy. Thou love him so, and he will love thee too. An instant, and I will bring him to thy feet. Exit. Wana, looking out, and with intense eagerness, at last recognizes Leon, and screams. Leon, his son, his... Oh, what a blow is this! Oh, death, be swift, be merciful and swift! His son. Drawing Rinaldos aside with impassioned vehemence. Father, you forced this sacrifice. Will you rescue me? Rescue, Juana? I spake to you of one who claimed my hand, who had my vows. He stands there, his son. He? The son of him whose bride you made me. You. Behold your work. Behold the sacrifice. With restrained vehemence. There was a Roman father who, to save his child from less dishonor than awaits me here, out of his very tenderness drew strength to plunge with his own loving hand a knife swift through her heart. Have you that Roman's love? Pluck me from out of this horror and be quick. Re-enter Gomez, troubled. Gomez aside. The stubborn boy, the wayward haughty boy. The fault was mine, I roused his pride. Refuse to see her. Well then, let him go. When I have taught it honor, he forsooth must hold aloof. Juan, my proud boy, knows not thy worth. An ancient blood ill brooks. Tut, let him but see thee, and his pride will fall. The music of thy voice and the magic of thy smile will conquer him. Let us in. This day shall not be darkened by a thought of grief. He leads her out. Procession follows. Herman remains. And thus doth man, with lightly pounding heart and careless swiftness, sweep adown the path where sorrow like a lion lies in wait to leap on him. Gomez will not be warned. Let the huge ruin fall and crush his heart, then will he listen to my words of comfort. From sorrow's depths there issues heavenly light to guide the soul and wing its upward flight. Exit. Re-enter Leon and Antonio. Stay me not, for I must hence Antonio. Meet her I cannot. Let us to Madrid. There will maddening dissipation plunge my soul into a fierce forgetfulness. Your absence will appear so strange. I know what torture it must be for you to meet the heartless jade. Do not revile, Juana. Although her falsehood kills me, 
Yet her name has been such music to these loving ears. I cannot hear it now in bitterness. How can I speak of her? Is she not heartless? Antonio, when we discover we have adored false gods, we dash their unsacred images to earth. But to revile them were poor blasphemy. So woman, the religion of the heart, we worship or forget, but ne'er revile. Forget her then and stay. To forget her? To dash that idol from its pedestal? To tear that cherished image from my soul? To shroud the past in death? And cast a crape over that future once so radiant? Bear it with manliness. Meet her with scorn. To meet her. To withstand her loveliness, as it would interpose between my wrath. Enter Juana, hurriedly. Leon, a single word. Leave me, Antonio. Exit Antonio. He turns aside. He will not speak to me. A pause. Oh, Leon, speak to me. If it be to curse me, curse me by all thy love, by all thy woes. Heap on this sorrowing head the bitterest curses. Crowd all the horror of thy hate upon me. But speak. What can I say? Admire thy bridal wreath. Its fragrance fills the air. Tis sweet, so very sweet, becomes thee well. Must I admire thy dress, thy bridal dress? Tis very, very dainty. The purity of white becomes thee. I might point indeed to a dark spot of falsehood on thy brow. Why should I? Who will see it? Seeing it, who will attend, while jewels on that brow outblazon every spot? I might tell thee thy bosom fluttered once with happy thoughts, the timid innocence of trusting love. Why should I? Does not thy bosom flutter beneath this costly lace? I might recall some foolish, childish oaths which passed thy lips. Thy lips indeed. They were but idle breath, cast on the vagrant air so long ago. Tis three months. Twelve weeks! Dost thou remember? Thou wert to kiss my scars when I returned. I'm here. Here are my scars. I'm here unchanged. And thou... My father's bride. Oh, why, when love doth wound, doth he not strike still deeper down and kill? Leon, the worst is true, yet not the worst. Wilt thou but listen to me? Now in this hour supreme before I die, wilt thou hear me justify what I have done? What canst thou justify? Canst thou indeed, with giant hand hurl back the waves of time? And all the shipwrecked fragments piece in you? Canst thou restore this deserted heart? The love, the passionate love that once was there. Wanna, weeping. This is just punishment. Thou canst not. Who can recall the yesterday of crime? I sob. Give sorrow utterance in tears, or it will clamber fierce about thy heart, as about mine it does, and stifle thee. A pause. Hadst thou no pity? Oh, what hast thou done? Here in the morning of my life, ere grief had hardened me, while all my trust in truth was yet unshaken by experience? Life, love, and truth to me are mockeries, because ambition tempted thy weak soul. I heard of woman's falsehood, and I smiled. My faith in woman was a faith in thee. That is destroyed. Thou false, whom can I trust? Having loved thee, how can I love again? What am I but a crushed and broken thing, standing forlorn amid my ruined hopes? Oh, there are outrages which strengthen us, rousing indignant spirits to the conflict. But falsehood withers. Falsehood crushes. Kills. It does. It does. Oh, how you torture me, more with the deep unkindness of your thoughts than the restrained severity of words. Beautiful sorrow, let me gaze on thee. Ay, there are the charms which lured the trusting fool. My bark was sailing on a pleasant sea, till that false beacon lured it from its track. And what is now that prideful bark? A wreck. The wide, wide agony goes forth in shrieks. For winds to carry, with a pitying moan, The merciless waves wash men adrift like weeds. 
Yet o'er this weltering horror still that light smiles on the desolation it has caused, is still the same bright beckoning treachery. No, no, not treachery. I have been weak, but I have not been false to thee. Not false? Art thou a bride? Oh, when I think of what thou wert, and what thou art become, by heaven I feel immeasurable hate. Pluck from my breast the love that weepeth there, and leap into its place with hot revenge. Revenge thyself. Strike. Curse. But hear me. I that have wronged thee, wrong myself the more. I am a bride, yet I have not been false. I swear it. Start not. Thou hast not been false. My heart is still thine own. But the hand is my father's. Oh, Ioanna, I cannot curse thee. I know that stronger minds will truckle to the gods and shows of rank. I know that such temptation might have lured an angel from her purity. The pomp, the grandeur of this marriage dazzled thee. It was natural, and yet... Oh, heaven, to think hadst thou been true, this rank would have been thine, this splendour thine, and love to sanctify it. And now? And now? Oh, it is terrible. Weeps. I will be heard. I have entreated patience. Now I insist. Weak have I been, and wicked, but the vile thing that thou believest me, I am not. This marriage was a sacrifice, not an ambition, a horror, not a joy. To save a father from the clutch of ruin, I threw away my life. The words which passed these lips were none of mine. A father asked a daughter's life, and took it. Twas his act. I was a victim, not a willing bride. Twas forced on me, and like that Spartan boy who gagged the cries of piercing agony while the cloaked monster to his heart fed on, so I concealed my love and misery, performed the sacrifice, and gave my hand. But for myself, behold, drawing a dagger, this widows me. Juana. Tonight, it is my bridal night. If he who wedded me without my love opposes my resolve to quit this world and seek for peace within the convent walls, this gives me my release. Oh, I was weak. I had no right to make the sacrifice. Upbraid my weakness. Curse me. But, Leon, do not think it was inconstancy or low ambition that swerved me from the truth. I am thine own, thine until death, thine after death, thine ever. If this be true. If, tis not the Leon who loved, but he who weeps that doubts Juana. I, false to thee, to thee who art my life, throbs not my heart in audible denial. Do not thy noblest instincts whisper thee that though necessity may shape our acts, it cannot bend our souls? Would ambition have lured me from thee? No, nor me from thee. But if thy father's honor, nay, his life, were to be rescued by the sacrifice, if this and only this could rescue him, wouldst thou not crush the life within thy breast? And that did I. Kissing her hand with respectful tenderness. Oh, pardon my doubts. Juana, overjoyed. And thou believest me to be? An angel. I should have known this act was none of thine. Juana, triumphantly. Now I can die, for now I am believed. Sinks into his arms and kisses him. Enter Gomez and Lizardo at back. They are struck motionless at the sight. Leon, release me. Oh, unwind thy arms. This sudden passion, this embrace is guilt. Guilt? Am I not another's? Rushes out. Ha! Huh. Rushes after her. Gomez, recovering from his stupor. Are the heavens dumb? Why do they not feel outraged with me and the power of the world? 
how will winds and whistle through the rain, and ancient thunder roll about the hills in throbbing passion of unwielding grief, or lightning strike with nimble fire this earth and blast it into ashes, open earth, and in thy deep abyss hide my shame. Coming down the stage. What have I seen? Great God, what have I seen? Air, I want air to breathe. Heart, give not way. What have I seen? Ha, ah, he saw it too. Lizardo. Lizardo approaches. Gomez, with ill-suppressed agitation, in a low tone, affecting calmness, continues. I would speak to thee. Didst thou see? Didst thou not? That... Would that my eyes were out. And didst thou hear? Didst thou distinctly hear? Alas! Gomez, with increased agitation. And thou, what, what dost thou think? My thoughts are tears. Gomez, passionately. Slave, thy hideous thoughts are traitors. Suddenly, checking himself, proceeds with stern calmness. Thou hast seen nothing, seeing much. Beware. I say thy mistress is all purity. Let not thy insolent eyes blister her cheek with hints of shame, nor thy licentious thoughts degrade her with impossible suspicions, or woe upon thy life. I warn thee, beware. After a pause. We are prone to error, good Lissardo. Very prone. It was not meet we trusted implicitly to sense. They were strangers. And passion? Tis not of so sudden growth. And the relationship? It was natural, quite natural. What were more natural? Thou seest that I, I whom it nearly touches, am calm, quite calm, not moved at all by it. And Lissardo, were things as they seem, a pause, thinkest thou I could have calmly gazed on them? At such a sight, if such as thou might think, but which thou wouldst not, canst not, darest not think. At such a sight, Medusa's serpent locks would gasp in terror, and in hissing die, at horror greater than themselves, and yet thou seest me calm. Now leave me. Send my son here. Exit Lazardo. It will be known. Such things are always known, and burn in cautious lips. My name a byword, and if it were not known, how could I hide the overwhelming consciousness of the great wrong? Do I not know it? O oh, come, perpetual night, thick darkness come, and blind each peering sense. Why do I live? Can I endure this shame? See hate beneath the mask of love, and lies, hideous beneath caressing blandishments. My wife, my son, I have no wife, no son. So young, and yet so lost, so lost, so lost. But is it credible? Are senses fired thus in a moment, with a simple glance? Oh, everything is credible in youth, in hot, lascivious, reckless, wanton youth. Enter Leon. Oh, art thou come? Does not my presence blast thee? Look at me. Am I thy father? Am I he whose love thou hast repaid with infamy? I? Thou. Infamy? Gomez, after a struggle. Hast thou not seen Juana? Ha! Huh. Why there? The thunderbolt has reached thee. Yes, t'was a noble deed, a knightly deed, to crush a father's hope, a worthy deed. She is so beautiful, and thou so bold, beauty and youth well matched. Thy flowing locks, so glossy soft, no amorous, so fine, far better suit her soft caressing hand than mine of grisly iron grey. Thou art youthful, ardent, full of witchery, framed in a moment to enthrall her sense. I am an old, grave and stern, and passionate, but she is mine, my wife. Dost hear, my wife? Leon? who has been enduring tortures, exclaims, O oh, agony! Why, how is this? Silent? Where is the unblushing, daring, lying brow, 
which should outbrave all accusations, where thou darest not look at me, while fearing not to do this infinite wrong, thou fearest the gaze of him who thou wrongest? No, never did I wrong thee. Tis thou. Gomez, bewildered. Not wrong me? Thou art innocent? Thy kisses too? They? They were innocent? <laughs> the world is not. Nothing is what it seems. A vision all. It's not enough that fate has punished us. Must we too? I pray thee, speak not. For thy voice touches me strangely. Thy voice hurts my heart. I cannot bear it. There is a terror in thy words my soul sickens to interpret. Horrible fears rise up before me in ghastly dreams. Faces oppress us. Yet the truth must out, to scare this hideous phantom from thy sight. Father, be patient. Open thy soul to me. Tis true I love Juana. Gomez, fiercely. Bastard, restrain thy tongue. It is to rouse me to extremity thou utterest that dread and awful crime. Then be it so. Thou art no son of mine. Draw and defend thy passion if thou canst. Draws. Leon remains motionless. Is thine arm paralyzed and thy soul ashes? Draw. Hear me. Has courage but to strike, not to defend? Draw, bastard. Hear me, father. Can that word pass thy lips, not choking thee? I am no father. I have got no son. I am alone, alone in this wide world, a sorrowing old man. I had a son, but he was pure, heroical, and brave. He was no lustful. Interrupt me not. A relationship between us there is none. Thou art a villain. From my blood I cast thee. And here, as man to man and foe to foe, engaged in deadly strife, I bid thee draw. Enter, Wana, behind. By all my hopes of heaven, I swear the guilt thy maddened rage throws on me is not mine. Hear me with calmness. This... Oh, it is so wild, so horrible, so measureless a crime, so unsupported by a look of truth, that thou, am I thy son? Will not my past life speak to thy conscience with a trumpet tongue and give the lie to every base suspicion? What is an upright life if twill not bear its testimony to the soul's uprightness? And thou art innocent. By heaven. Incarnate lie. I saw her in thine arms. Juana, rushing between them. It is most true. They start. There was my place, my refuge, and my throne. Now wreak thy wrath on me. O young in crime, thou shalt grow old in woe. My vengeance shall be terrible. This crime, if crime there be, is thine. Have I then dreamed? Did I not see aright? Here on this very spot I saw through blinding tears, saw that which crushed all feelings into one bloody and fierce, wild, terrible, and dim, saw honor trampled, saw love outraged, saw my new-made bride in the arms of mine own son. Is this a dream, or is it hideous truth? It is most true, and yet the crime was thine. Why was I chosen to adorn thy pride? Couldst thou not read in every shuddering glance that I shrunk from thee, that my soul uprose against the sacrifice which made me thine, to one so cunning in the ways of love, so subtly versed in windings of the heart, was not my loathing for this match made plain? Learn it now, then. I loved your son. Leon? Our vows were plighted ere I went away. I had concealed my birth. She knew me not. I loved him poor and friendless as myself. I love him still. I am no bride of thine. There is a tomb between us, and I loathe thee. Now slay us both. Throws herself on Leon's neck. Gomez, recovering from his stupor. The storms are passing from this brain. Thy hand, Leon, thy hand. Here to my heart. Leon rushes to his arms. Calamity like this uproots a life. Oh, I have wronged you both, unwittingly and yet irreparably. My own beloved, my wretched boy. Sobs on his neck. Wana, kneeling at his feet. 
Oh, pardon me for those wild, wicked words. I knew not what I said, for I was mad. Grief had so wrung my soul. Let me unsay them. Gomez, raising her. My broken heart is bleeding, but the bleeds, Juana, still for thee. Mine was the fault, be mine the punishment. Or aid me both to seek some means of reparation now. Alas, there's none. Patience, there must be some. Why so? Yes, I have lived my time. Leon, you shall be happy with Juana. Enter Herman, who crosses the back of the stage. Gomez, taking her hand. For the last time, Juana, I take this hand and vainly stammer forth my deep affection when fair-eyed children clamor round your knees with loving upper look of questioning, when your dear husband sits beside the hearth, and in that peaceful bliss your memories wander o'er bygone days, transmuting pains into a pensive pleasure, then think of me, and teach your children soon to lisp my name and bless it, for there's a magic power in the sweet music of an infant's voice to stir a mother's heart to tenderness. Think of me kindly. Kisses her, then addressing Herman. Herman, you said I right. Man is of earth. On earth his foot is placed. He soars to fall. I have soared and I have fallen. Humbled by sorrow, now I come to thee taking the Order of the Golden Fleece from his neck and casting it on the ground. Symbol of earthly grandeur lied out of my feet. Drawing his sword. Thou trusty sword, our dear companionship is at an end. Now we part forever. My heart has been as pure as thy bright blade, and now like thee. Snapping it across his knee. Tis broken, the broken heart like their poor broken sword, hath no place in the world. Father, explain thy purpose. What fearful resolution prompts these words? My resolution is a reparation. The Pope will dispensation grant my marriage is annulled. Come to my arms, be happy. That is the last wish of this broken heart. Embraces and then blesses them, as they sink on their knees. Heaven's benediction rest on both. Tears himself away, and, mastering his emotion, walks proudly toward Herman, saying, Now to the desert, on. Curtain falls. End of Act Three. End of The Noble Heart by George Henry Lewis